Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome back to the Elemental Maker. Today, I have an absolutely awesome score here. A medical surplus oxygen concentrator and compressor. So, what this does, it takes atmospheric air, uh, absorbs out the nitrogen using some molecular sieve beds. So you get about 94-95% pure oxygen coming out of the bottom unit there. And then it sends it up to this top unit which actually compresses the oxygen and allows you to fill bottles. So, got this little condom here, take that off, boom. Just turn them both on and it'll fill the bottle in about an hour and a half or so to 2000 PSI, which is absolutely awesome. This is gonna let us do so many projects involving high pressure oxygen and possibly further down the line if I can get a good Dewar flask, some, uh, some liquid oxygen. So that would be absolutely awesome. So I thought we would tear into each of these, let you guys get a good look at the innards and how each of them works. Now, I'm pretty sure I know damn well how the bottom unit works. You got two molecular sieve beds, blah, blah, blah. Top unit, I'm very, very curious because, I mean, that is a super compact unit to be able to fill a bottle to 2000 PSI. The only other compressors I've really worked with in that range are scuba compressors, and those are much louder, much bigger, and they need a lot more cooling. So I'm really curious to see how this sucker works, because it's, it's quiet, it doesn't use much power either. So there's got to be some, some good trickery going on inside of that top unit there. Let's see how she works. Alright, taking a look at the innards of the top unit here. Hey, what's up, buddy? Got the K9 assisting this one here. Oh, wow. Look at those. <laughs> oh, look at those innards. It's gorgeous. All right, so here, obviously, that's our fill station. Now, looking at the tubing here, you can see it goes to this uh, manifold here, header, manifold, whatever. Alright, before I was so rudely interrupted by UPS, picking up my Amazon returns. <laughs> you see this thing had quite a bit of use. God knows what the hell that nastiness is comprised of. But looking at the insides here. Don't get out of the way. Alright. Look at that. Hopefully you can see it. Eh. Let's zoom in a little bit. Ooh, there we go. <laughs> All right. So, what we have here, absolutely gorgeous. Now, as I mentioned probably six or seven times, this thing fills an oxygen bottle to 2,000 PSI. And now, for something so compact, that is mind-blowing. It does take a while. It's not the fastest compressor in the world. But you can see here the way they did it. So, they have set up multiple stages so total of five stages with varying cylinder diameters you got your motor here goes over a big pulley and then connected to the pulley is a crank that crank turns a piston in each each of these uh, cylinders and given their different diameters and pressures I would imagine it's pretty well equalized so the pump is doing minimal work not having to fight the massive pressure of 2000 PSI because it's balanced on the other side. So I think that's how they're able to get such high pressures out of such a little compressor here. Now, if you're a scuba guy, this, uh, <laughs> which I am, I, I don't, uh, don't yet have my own tanks, but now that I have this, I might have to go out and get a set of tanks. I usually rent my stuff, but uh, holy shit. So what you can do here is just bypass all the electronics, run this sucker, all you got is your motor here, and uh, I guess you could just bypass the oxygen sensor, that way it shuts off at 2000 PSI. Now most scuba tanks, uh, I think they're usually charged to around 3000 PSI, so you know, you won't get as long a run time unless you, uh, unless you bypass the pressure cutoff and uh, work this sucker a little further than it's meant to be. Not sure if it would handle 3,000 PSI, but 
From the looks of it, it's built pretty stout. That's the beautiful thing about medical devices. They are dramatically overbuilt. Um, when I used to work in the med device industry, we would test the living shit out of stuff like this for months on end, just making it run continuously uh, to the point of failure so we could analyze the failures and write up reports and then submit that. Huge pain in the ass, but everything is overbuilt to a ridiculous degree. Pretty minimal electronics up there. Uh, I would have expected a little bit more, but you pretty much got your oxygen sensor, your interface, and that's pretty much it. You got your, what, four LEDs. Not much in the way of electronics there. Nice little motor, though. What is she? God damn. So that's a 12th horsepower motor. <laughs> Drawing 1.1 amps. Charging up a tank to 2,000 PSI. Unbelievable. Nice little capacitor there. Good good leads. Nice. Everything's really secure in here. Very, very well done. Now looking at the O2 path here, we have our input. Comes in. Looks like a little particulate filter there. And then it uh, tees off. That goes to the oxygen sensor so it actually knows that it's at a concentration to begin filling. Also probably monitors it throughout the fill to make sure oxygen doesn't drop. Then the majority of the oxygen goes into the manifold here, which then gets distributed to the uh, first the bacteriostatic filter just to uh, stop any little critters from getting in your oxygen tank. See that there? And then it just goes right to the uh, first manifold, and that's where it begins to get pressurized. Pretty damn cool. I love the fact that they have the pentagon of, of uh, compressor stages. So you got, you know, this is probably your second stage, I'd imagine. Obviously, your first stage is the biggest one that's taking the lowest pressure. So you can make that the biggest. And, yep, that's coming right from the manifold. Going over to the second biggest one, right there. That goes over to the third, fourth, and that puts out to the fifth here. Yep. So, beautifully designed, a great way to keep the motor requirements minimal for uh, some high pressure workings. Really, really cool little design there. I love that. Let's take a look at the concentrator, just to see how they actually are able to get reasonably pure oxygen from atmospheric air. Oh, good. All right. Woo. Weighs a, a pretty penny there. Can't even see this damn thing. Yep. All right. So, uh, we're now looking at the oxygen concentrator. So, looking at, uh, at the front, we obviously have the user interface. You have your oxygen control rate, output for someone uh, breathing off this, and then your switch, fuse there, or a breaker. That might be for a... Uh, little humidifier. Uh, got an hour meter, so I guess you can see time between rebuilds or uh, service. Ah, and here you have your uh, your pre-filter, just some spongy shit. Ah. Ooh, that's ugly. Uh, it's gonna need refill. So here you got a nice little HEPA filter, just to keep the bacteria and fine dust out of your oxygen. This thing has definitely seen quite a bit of use. Time for a replacement on that, for sure. What the hell is this? Some kind of little spare line. Oh, you know what? That might be for a, a humidifier. That probably hooks up to the front, plugs into a, a humidifier there. Let's take her skirt off. Can you even say that on YouTube nowadays? Probably not. I gotta say that uh, that compressor was really built quite nicely for serviceability. I'm curious to see how this is. Get up. Come on, you can do it. Oh, it's dusty as hell. Oh my God. Been a while since this thing's been opened. Wow. Definitely time for a cleaning. But look at the innards. Oh, she's beautiful. 
So taking a look at this, now if you're familiar with air compressors, you know that recently they're making the switch to ultra quiet air compressors. They're, they're phenomenal. Just got my buddy one for a, uh, a home warming present not too long ago and it's mind blowing how quiet the thing is. This is that same sort of motor. So you can see it's nicely isolated, free floating on those springs and that keeps vibrations and, and noise to a minimum. Really, really well done there. And uh, this looks just like the ones that they use on the California Air Tools brand. It, it actually looks like one of their motors, so I'm wondering if Invacare maybe uh, subcontracts or, or purchase those in bulk and private labels them, or has them private labeled by uh, California Air Tools. Oh, there we go. Okay. So up top we just have a loud buzzer. Here's your HEPA filter. Looking at the ass of it here. The high pressure air pump, I shouldn't say high pressure, but ultra quiet air pump, uh, pumps into here, which looks to be, what is that, a, a four way valve, I guess? Some sort. Got a pressure sensor under there that you guys might not be able to see. Basically pushes the pressurized air into these molecular sieve beds. Those absorb the nitrogen out. Uh, probably made of zeolite or uh, some similar material that has pore sizes that selectively absorb uh, nitrogen and allow the oxygen to pass through. It's tiny, tiny little uh, five angstrom uh, pore sizes so the nitrogen can get absorbed in, oxygen passes freely by. So nitrogen gets sucked in here. Only one bed is working at a time uh, so it's allowed to dissipate out the, uh, the nitrogen once it gets filled or consumed, it's uh, reusable. So basically it'll pressurize, absorb nitrogen, pass through oxygen, then it'll switch to this bed once this one's full of nitrogen, and then allow that bed to depressurize so it off gases the nitrogen, and then it repeats switching cycles and so on and so forth. I probably misexplained that horrifically. Here we have a uh, little oxygen storage tank so this kind of acts as a buffer or a, uh, a battery, a capacitor to smooth the flow of oxygen and to uh, prevent any sort of drop during transition between canisters. So pretty neat there. Not a whole lot going on. It's uh, kind of what you'd expect to see. Dirty as hell. Gonna give this a good dusting before I put it back together. Obviously you have your uh, oxygen sensor up top here that's to actually so the unit can know what percent oxygen it is producing that might also play an effect in when it knows how to switch uh, canisters because uh, the nitrogen will slowly start rising your oxygen concentration will drop and it'll know hey that canister's full let's switch and allow that one to off gas the nitrogen and then it rinses and repeats so little bacteria static filter in there just to stop you some, from uh, sucking in bacteria and uh, yeah, that's about it for her. Pretty, pretty nice looking unit. I really like that pump. Beautifully isolated. You got some uh, sound deadening material here. Nice galvanized sheet metal construction. Uh, where did I put the housing? That probably has some sound deadening. Oh yeah, look at that. That's how they're trying to keep this thing ultra quiet. They got lots of damping foam to keep the uh, vibrations isol isolated to the uh, box there and also to prevent sound waves from the compressor making it through. So really nicely built unit. Nice stuff fit. <laughs> That's a pretty sweet unit there. Now a lot of glass makers uh, apparently are starting to use these because instead of having to go to the welding supply get your tank filled they can just keep one of these running and uh, obviously with the compressor up there and they can fill their tanks in their own shop so it might not save a whole lot of money in terms of actual operation this might not be too efficient I haven't measured that but uh, you know it saves the time and hassle of having to go fill your tanks all the time pretty pretty nice in my opinion that would be worth spending a little extra on your oxygen so what the hell am I doing with all this oxygen now let me show you now the thing is you can't just directly plug a welding regulator uh, which is a CGA 540 uh, fitting right there 
into a medical oxygen bottle. So I found this awesome little fitting on eBay for like 29 bucks. Screws right on there, has a uh, medical oxygen bottles or a CGA 870 connection. Goes right to a CGA 540 so you can screw on your welding oxygen. And, uh, and from there, you can get pressure Got to turn it on first, don't I? Ah, so I can now do some uh, some serious metal cutting with this sucker. Uh, for fuel, I just have it hooked up to propane. Uh, used to have an acetylene tank, but have since gotten rid of it. So this is an awesome little setup now. I got the uh, acetylene regulator just hooked right up to the propane tank. They're, they actually fit directly without any kind of difference. Got your flashback arresters. Um, you definitely want to use these if you're working with uh, welding gases because uh, what can happen is if your pressures are incorrectly set or if your check valves are bad, so I got check valves here as well, um, but you could potentially have your oxygen backflow into your lower pressure propane line or acetylene in a much worse case scenario and uh, if you get a flashback whole line will blow up and if your cylinder is filled with oxygen then then you're really screwed. Typically you won't get the what the actual fuel gas going into the oxygen tank because it's such higher pressure. Uh, I've never heard of any cases of that occurring. I've also never actually seen a, a full-on tank flashback. I have seen uh, your actual lines. I've seen a couple flashbacks in, in welding lines before so uh, they're, they're a pretty good scare. But uh, definitely, you want to get your flashback arresters. Better ones would hook up right to the torch. These were just some cheapies on Amazon uh, for the time being. But I'd prefer to see these hook up to the torch so the line itself couldn't flash back. And these are filled with a, a fine brass uh, sponge that actually absorbs the heat out of the flame front of the flashback and prevents it from going any further back takes all the energy out of the flame front, kills kills the uh, flashback. Sorry for that noise, we're in our my, uh, my basement here and we got the old dyno oil incinerator going. Trying to keep the shrinkage to a minimum in the house. All right, so let's give this a test. Now, obviously I need to uh, 3D print a proper stand with uh, some weights in it so the oxygen can actually sit upright. I don't like having to have it tilted over in order to operate, but it's kind of the only option I got right now. So, gonna start with the fuel. I don't have my uh, <laughs> my striker up here or down here. It's out in the garage, so we're stuck with this. Just gonna do a little baby flame. Got oxygen, and we'll we'll find tip it. Propane. Need a new tip. The tip I have was not designed for uh, for oxypropane. It's an oxyacetylene tip, so it's very much not not the correct type to be using. But it'll it'll work in a pinch. Now, in addition to oxypropane cutting, uh, it's it's actually not good for welding. So it's it's really kind of limited to cutting. Um, what I'm going to be doing, obviously. Rocket engines, hybrid rocket engines. And uh, I'll be showing you guys an old one that I built many years ago in an upcoming video. We'll, we'll test it real quick with some, uh, some oxygen, get it all fired up. But I hope you guys enjoyed. I will see you next time. Please don't forget to thumbs up, subscribe. If you like my channel, please consider supporting me on Patreon, keeping the channel as ad-free as possible and uh, keeping totally away from any corporate sponsorships and whatnot. Um, that's the way I want to keep the channel. So uh, I truly appreciate any and all patrons for uh, supporting the channel and, and keeping it rolling. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Have a good one. Now this is why they tell you not to smoke when you're on oxygen. If you have a leak, it can actually kind of saturate your clothing. And uh, before you know it, if you have a little spark, it uh, really kind of lights it up initially like a Christmas tree. Cat on 4th of July.